Hi, I'm Borkon. Glad to have you here. Welcome back. And uh, my quest for an unload safe flying machine farm has failed yet again. And no, uh, the clock didn't go bad. The clock performed just fine. The flying machines performed just perfectly. Nothing went wrong there. The problem was uh, the minecarts. Turns out that when things unload, first they unload to a state where Minecraft doesn't process entities and the mine minecrafts. No, the minecarts are entities, so they just fell off the iron bars and then got pushed around. And uh, this minecart actually destroyed half of this row of uh, pumpkin. Or not pumpkins, it's supposed to destroy the pumpkins, it destroyed the pumpkin plants. So, this is not unload safe and I don't think it can be made unload safe, at least not the way it works right now with the minecarts. I wasn't actually even gonna film this, so I already repaired the farm and I let everything regrow. There are maybe some fresh plants, no, I let everything regrow correctly. I was just frustrated and uh, didn't want to film this, but then I decided I should tell you. Like, uh, if you build a farm like this, it is not unload safe, it cannot be made unload safe, because we have a situation where redstone still works. Actually, wait, why, why would the flying machine work when we're not processing minecarts? To be honest, I actually don't understand that. I guess I need to learn even more about loading and unloading because something went wrong, the minecarts got unstuck and they destroyed the plants. That's all I know, the rest is speculation. And here is one more. I've been finding these plants growing on the wrong parts for many minutes now. I was about to say many hours, but that would be a lie. It's many minutes. I think I, I repaired most of them, so I have to AFK here actively and then turn the farm off when I'm leaving. Not a huge deal, but you know, I am absent-minded and I leave an area when I shouldn't and I, I unload things when I shouldn't and then things break. So that's why I'm on the quest to find the ultimate unload safe flying machine farm. And the sugarcane farm actually works. The sugarcane farm hasn't broken down uh, since I replaced the slimes with honey on the sugarcane farm. I will still fix the clock. Maybe we'll do it today depending on time and other things. But we're not yet done with this farm because as usual, as we can see from the side or from this side or from above, this is a bare bones farm, and I have said that I don't want to have just the mechanism and nothing else. Let's roll the time lapse.
right, that didn't turn out too bad. And I did something different with this building. So normally my process for uh, buildings and pretty much everything is that I spend a stupid amount of time in creative. I prepare everything I need to build. I have a full material list. I prepare all the materials. Like this is what I did when I was building the farm. But for this building, I decided to try something different. And I actually completely designed it and built this building during a stream. Of course, I absolutely misjudged the amount of time it should take. I thought it would take an hour and we would do something else during the stream. But this thing took pretty much the whole three hour stream. I did not expect it to take that long, but it turned out pretty good. So the idea is some kind of greenhouse, a little bit half industrial, maybe like late 19th century style of building. I still need to build something here and I promised the stream that I would do that. Maybe not in this episode, but that there would be a building here and not just, I, I wouldn't just extend the greenhouse or, or do something boring, but I'm gonna try to set up a building here. Not exactly sure how I should do that. But I think that we'll have to wait for later, because there are still other things that we need to get done in this episode. The next thing I want to work on is uh, this thing, the sugarcane farm. I have been putting it off for many weeks now, even though I have said that I have a finished design, which I do. And uh, yeah, it's part of my lag busting in my base initiative, because... Well, the performance in my base hasn't been the greatest, and I want to improve it. That's basically it. And uh, yeah, I have already started tearing it down here. I'm gonna finish this and talk about what's going on here and how I improve the sugarcane farm. The sugarcane farm is now fixed. Uh, I did a few quite useful improvements here. So number one is uh, like the pumpkin farm I'm using a new clock here and this is an unload safe clock that shouldn't go bad hopefully I have never seen it go bad I torture tested it and it's good uh, which means that this doesn't have to be honey anymore this bar on the tethered flying machine I'm still keeping it as honey because why not but now it could be slime as well but it's nice to have it self-repairing and I did some rewiring here, nothing unusual, it had to be done because of the clock. But the other interesting part that I've done here is with the minecart unloaders. So, as you can see, there is some extra rails here, it used to be just powered rails all the way. But now, as you can see here, the minecarts are resting on activator rails that are enabled. Which means that the hopper minecarts are not picking anything up. They're disabled because the activator rail, when it's activated, then it deactivates the hopper minecart. Yeah, it's confusing. But a powered activator rail disables a hopper minecart. And then a depowered activator rail that we have here enables the hopper minecarts again. So when they start rolling out, they uh, get disabled and uh, they are not causing any lag. And the same thing here, as you can see, this little line here goes into these target blocks. And if we go around here, you can see that the target blocks are under the hoppers, which means that when this redstone line is powered, the hoppers are disabled. And this happens after a slight delay with this pulse extender. Uh, when the last item has passed through this hopper and into this bubble elevator, which I, by the way, had to move a couple of blocks. Uh, but it still connects to the stuff reduct, so it's fine. So the result is that the hoppers and the hopper minecarts are disabled most of the time, except when they're, the hopper minecarts are picking up loot, and when the hoppers are sucking out loot from the hopper minecarts. And also the whole mechanism for when the hopper minecarts are running is much less complicated. They just run once now after the harvest is done. 
So the flying machine comes back. That sends the minecarts out once, and they move very slowly in the beginning, but it's fine. They pick up speed. Come back. The hoppers are still enabled because there is loot coming through, but any second now, when the loot has finished being picked up, this is gonna disable, and we will lock the hoppers. The hopper minecarts are already locked. And the comparator disabled, and now the hoppers are locked, and we're not getting any lag from them. That's not a huge thing, because there aren't that many hoppers. The hopper minecarts are actually worse, but there aren't that many hoppers here, so it's not a huge deal, but I want to do... A similar thing for pretty much all the farms in the area. The hardest one will be actually the hoppers on top of the furnaces here. I'm not exactly sure how I can route the signal because, well, the, I don't have any good access to that. So I'll have to figure that out somehow. But there is still 1,100 hoppers loaded when I'm standing here. And I think most of them are the storage system and they shouldn't be causing lag. I'm not exactly sure. And uh, yeah, we are down to 15 MSPT. We've, we're kind of around 20 before I started thinking about these things. So yeah, some decent improvement, but there is still more improvement to be done. We can do better. I just upgraded the server to 116.4. This didn't change performance at all, but even if you don't need any features from an update, it's still a good idea to be up to date with the latest version because all the mods are going to be done for it, data packs and stuff like that. So that's generally a good idea. And speaking of mods, let's uh, do something smart with mods uh, to figure out where our CPU time is going on the server. With the carpet mod, with the tick command, you do tick, health. And it's pretty much always the same culprits. So, doo -doo -doo. there we go, we got an answer. It's always entities. It's Sometimes if you're doing something crazy, it could be block entities, but it's pretty much always entities. So, tick, entities, to let's, let's just figure out what's going on here. And now we can see that, uh, well, in my world, mushrooms are eating the most, 2.71 milliseconds per tick. I can't really do anything about them. After I grassified the whole island, I guess I can kill off the, all the mushrooms and that will go away. Uh, hoppers, I've already worked on that. I have lowered this. This was over four uh, at some point, so that's fine. Minecarts, I suspect, are mostly... The sheep farm, like I like we can see here. So here we can actually see the counts of uh, different entities that might be causing issues. And I have 1050 hoppers, but hoppers are not, not, not that bad anymore, so that's fine. Chests, I have lots of chests, of course. And then 116 mushrooms, item frames are not causing any lag. Um, Items that are loose, so probably in the stuff we ducked, aren't an issue either. Our big issue right now is mushrooms, but I can't do anything about them until I have cleared out the whole island. Or not cleared out, but grassified the whole island. But then we have zombies. We have 47 zombies, and I have now spent quite a lot of time trying to find them. Because, uh, well, I'm supposed to have one zombie. If we look at mob caps, this is also a carpet mod feature. And yes, I am doing administrative tasks, but I'm just showing people maybe it, c it could be useful to you when you need to clean up your world and figure out where all your issues are coming from. So if we look at mob caps, the first number, uh, the dash means that there is nothing there. And 70 is the mob cap for hostile mobs. So we don't have any hostile mobs, but wait a minute. Didn't this command just tell us that we have 47 zombies? And yes, we do. 
and those are most likely zombies that have picked up items and uh, are not counting towards mob cap and are will never despawn either. And I don't want to spend 2.2 milliseconds uh, 20 times per second, which means 4% of my CPU time on my server, managing zombies that are doing nothing, they are not contributing to this world, so I want to find them. And yes, this is administrative stuff, so we will use cheaty methods to, for this. Stuff that you can't do as a normal player, but stuff that your admin on your server definitely should be doing to figure out what's going on. Let's just do something like this. Effect, give, Let's choose all the zombies, type zombie, glowing for, let's say, two minutes, and I don't know, amplifier, let's give it a hundred. So now we can see this zombie, which is our only legitimate zombie, is glowing. But I can't see any other zombie. And I will use now a tweaker mod feature, I will go into free cam, and just try to find the stupid zombies that are everywhere, or not everywhere, but there is 47 zombies somewhere in this world that I need to get rid of. I need to, but I, before I just destroy them with a command, which I can easily do, I want to figure out what's going on. Where are they? So I'm using the free cam here and they are just not here. And it's most likely because I have to be close to them or closer to them so that they render in. And Freecam doesn't do that, I need to be there as my character. But they are bouncing around and probably colliding with each other and eating all my CPU time. So, there will be a much, much more complicated command now. And the command is goes something like this. And no, I have not made up that myself. I have I have help, asked the internet for some help how to do this. But basically, we're gonna execute the command as each affected entity of type zombie, and they will tell us this magical thing, which is basically they will tell us their position. Bam. And we can see we have a one group of zombies here at x minus 115 and z 213 or minus 213. There seems to be another group of zombies here at minus 200 minus 770. And then a few scattered more around the world. So I think we should go to this group which is at minus 214, minus 117. But I do believe I saw them here in this area. And if we go into free cam, yes. Is it this group? No, yes, this is the group of zombies. They're all holding items for, I don't know what reason, but they are holding items, so they will never despawn. And they are eating my CPU time. But I found another group. I, oh, I think the effect wore off. Let's give them the glowing effect again. Oh, now it's 66, so there is more. Yes, this is the group I found earlier. Yes, I have done this before. I'm, I'm now just showing you how, how I found this group. This group is completely crazy. There is a zombie villager here. Water seems to have been pushing them in from somewhere, unclear where. And for some reason, they've been picking up items, and now I have this massive group of zombies, all holding items, and all bouncing from each other, colliding, and it's the collisions that usually cost a lot of processing power on the server, just so that the zombies can bounce. If they're just standing still and doing nothing, they're probably not eating CPU time, but all these collisions are definitely eating my CPU time. I want my CPU time back. Let's go kill the zombies. I have done this before. I have shown this a long time ago, but it's time to clean up once again. Now I need to kill these zombies somehow. And uh, let's be very careful about that because of course, I don't want to affect this guy in the iron farm. I don't want to kill him. 
because, well, I need him for the iron farm to work. So he is not allowed to die, everybody else or every other zombie needs to go. Let's be very careful about how we do this then. Let's do something like this. And you can see here I have already been testing this to make sure that it works. But we do. Effect, give, type zombie, and we do name, not Robert, because that's my name zombie, glowing for 30 seconds and 100. I don't know if 100 is relevant or not. So now let's see, is, is my zombie in the iron farm glowing? No, he's not. Good. Which means that we can uh, remove the glowing effect from all the zombies again. So that works. So since this worked, we can just do kill with the same selector and without that stuff, bye bye zombies stealing my CPU time. Let's go back to our spot where we're doing all the performance testing and see if this affected anything. Yeah, look at that. My MSPT was over 15, now it's about 13. It dropped by one or two, which is exactly what I wanted to see. And we can just verify with tick, entities, and now zombies are not stealing all our CPU time, which is exactly what I wanted. Now the hoppers are the worst, so now I need to start lag busting hoppers again. But I will actually start with the minecarts and sheep. I do believe that... let's just see. This is enough white wool for any project I would want to do before building the large sheep farm. It is time to end this farm. It has served its purpose, it was nice. Goodbye, sheep. Why am I dealing with moving targets? There we go, remove their power. Pick up my mine carts. Disable the minecarts down here. And remove the hoppers here. Oh, oh, that didn't work. That worked. Awesome. This hopper is fine because it's covered up. So now let's go back to the spot where I do my all my measurements. And let's see if this has helped. And we're down to 12. That has been some nice lag busting. And just to verify, there is no minecarts in, in here. There's still a bunch of sheep. Oh yeah, it's, it's there in the sheep breeder. I definitely don't need the sheep breeder. Goodbye sheep. Goodbye sheep. And let's see, are we down to 11? We're down to 11. This is exactly what I want to see. And now my server is performing... Well, at least 30% better than it was earlier in this episode. And just to finish things off for today, I figured I'd do the thing I said in the beginning I would. I would make a building in front here and... Uh, yeah, it turned out very, very strange. I have no idea what this is supposed to be. I guess the connection here is fine, but now everything else ended up very, very, very square. But squares is the only thing I have in my head. I'll try to improve it maybe later, but that will be it for today. And this is usually the time when I announce a live stream. Unfortunately, I will not have time for a live stream tonight. There something else popped up and I need to deal with that. But I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks a lot for watching. And have a good lag busting. Bye.